Man, don't we live in an awesome time for digital cameras. As of making this video, the Leica M9 and the M240 go for around the same price, which is slightly less than the price of a classic Leica M6, while the M10 goes for roughly $1,500 more, which is about the price of a used Leica MP. And just think about it, just a few years ago, these three cameras were the pinnacle of what Leica could offer. Their Halo product, the peak, the most cutting edge technology that retailed for around $7,000 US dollars when they were first announced. But now, because they're not technically the most current, we're able to own them for just a fraction of the price. But between these three cameras, I've made about 100,000 pictures through them since 2014. And while that's not that much compared to some of you, it's been enough to form some level of an opinion. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. I'll be sharing with you the most essential differences between the Leica M9, M240, and M10, and not just the technical stuff, but all my experiential takeaways from my time with them as well. We're going to go over what really makes each camera special compared to the rest, and at the end, I'll leave you with some suggestions on what might fit you best based on what you need and what you value with your photography. So let's jump right in. So the Leica M9 was released in 2009, the M240 2012, and the M10 2017. And from that, you can probably guess which has the best technical image quality. But that said, don't write off the M9 just yet, because all its limitations actually contribute to what makes this camera special. So let's start off with that. The first thing about the M9 that I really like isn't its retro CCD sensor or the vintage colors that you hear most people talk about, but it's actually something that you might find really strange to enjoy, and that is its lo-fi LCD. Now wait, hear me out. I don't mean that I like it because its LCD is so bad, but more so because its LCD is really lo-fi. It actually shapes your shooting experience in a way that I really enjoy. At the back of the M9 sits a 2.5 inch LCD that looks like an old Nokia phone. It's about one quarter the resolution of the LCD on the M10, so it's really pixelated and it's much smaller. And that's why I really like it, because when you're out shooting, the LCD is good enough to give you just the essential information that you practically need, but nothing more. It's just about sharp enough for you to see the rough overall layout of your composition, but not too sharp that it entices you to zoom in and check focus, and it gives you access to your histogram, which is your most important tool when it comes to double checking that you're nailing your exposure. Because it's slow and pixelated, it actually acts as a deterrent to chimping too much. And so the experience of shooting the M9 feels like one step in the direction of shooting a MD, but just with a little bit more information. And so apart from the MD, the M9 is pretty much the closest thing to being a digital film camera. And you experience that also with its usable ISO range. If you're shooting black and white, its highest usable ISO speed is 1600, which is pretty much HP5 pushed two stops. And if you want good colors, it caps out at about 800, and that's pretty much like Portra 800, which is the highest ISO color film that you're able to get today. So if you're already used to the ISO range of film, you'll be right at home with the M9. Besides that, its size is really nice, and I especially enjoy the sound of the shutter. Unlike other regular camera shutters, the one in the M9 has an additional winding sound that reminds me of a film camera that is advancing a frame of film, which is really awesome. The last thing that makes this camera stand out is indeed its Kodak CCD sensor, and I won't go into too much detail about that because I'm sure you've heard that a thousand times before, but unlike most modern CMOS sensors, the sensor in the M9 does produce colors that are one step in the direction of shooting film, if you nail your exposure. So if you like that look, I'm sure you'll appreciate the pictures of the M9. Well, what about its downsides? Well, to me, its biggest one is its buffer speed. If you're shooting in RAW, which you will need to do especially with this camera and its limited dynamic range, you'll only be able to shoot about five consecutive pictures in a row. After that, your buffer will fill up and you'll need to wait quite a while for the files to be written onto your memory card. So with the M9, you'll need to be more considered with your shots, say shooting two to three pictures of a scene, pausing a while, then shooting again. And if you do that, that rhythm will allow you to shoot the M9 continually. Its other pretty major downside is its maximum ISO speed. So if you're shooting in low light situations, you've got to embrace using a flash, which is a very nice look 
in and of itself, or you'll need to use a slow shutter speed. Its last downside is its serviceability. Leica has already announced that they don't have any new sensors to repair the M9 with. So if your sensor dies, your camera dies too. So if you're buying a new one, make sure to get one with a replaced sensor that doesn't have any corrosion. Next, let's move on to the M240. Out of all three, at the same price as the M9, I think the M240 presents you with the most value per dollar spent. With the M240, you're getting a more modern camera. The LCD at the back is a 3-inch one, which is pretty nice, definitely sharp enough for you to zoom in, which isn't a great thing to me. And actually, when I owned the M240 before buying the MD, I pretty much spent all my time with the camera with its back taped up, leaving only a small window on the left to show me what ISO I was at. So you could imagine how happy I was when Leica announced the MD. In terms of ISO, compared to the M9, the M240 will give you about one more stop of usable ISO speed. It easily handles ISO 1600 and it can do ISO 3200 in a pinch, but at 3200, you do begin to tangibly see some degradation of its colors and tones, but if you're shooting in black and white, then 3200 will look fine. Besides that, the thing that I really love the most about the M240, which I haven't really heard many people talk about, is its colors and tones. You mostly hear about the M9 and its CCD sensor, and while I do love the M9, I don't think that the tones of the M240 are any inferior. In fact, I personally prefer it to the M10. To me, the M240 gives the most exciting pictures. Like the M9, it has a bit more pop style and flavor compared to other brands of cameras, let's say Canon or Sony. But unlike the M9, it has better high ISO performance and better dynamic range as well. And so with its better sensor, it leads to it having a more nuanced ability to handle transitions in tones, especially at the extreme ranges of the tone curve compared to the Leica M9. So your extreme highlight and shadow values right before it falls off the edge. So in that sense, it has the best of both worlds, flavor and better technical performance. In terms of its downsides, I don't mean to be a shamer, but the M240 is fat. In the hands, it's substantially thicker than the M9 and the M10. And while that might seem superficial, it does tangibly affect the experience of how it feels like to shoot. Finally, the M10. If money isn't an issue, then this is probably the best option out of the three. The first thing that makes the M10 stand out to me is its ergonomics. In the hands, it physically feels the best, and combined with its beautiful external ISO dial, in terms of form, the M10 comes out on top. Besides that, a huge upgrade over the M240 is its ability to shoot in low light. It effortlessly handles ISO 3200, and it does 6400 well too. So that's over one to two stops of usable ISO speed compared to the M240. In terms of its pictures, it gives the best technical image quality. With a more nuanced picture that has a cleaner look, and its ability to hold on to those tones as you push the ISO up is by far the best. I describe the pictures of the M10 as hi-fi, rich, and laid-back, as compared to the more vibrant and punchy tones of the M240 and the M9. But that said, the sensor in the M10 has the same resolution as the M240, so 6000 by 4000 so if you're always shooting at low ISO speeds, say under 800, you probably won't see any increase in effective resolution between the M10 and the M240. So which should you get? Well, it depends on what you value. If you value resolution, the M9 does 18.5 megapixels, while the M240 and the M10 do 24. And that difference is tangible, especially if you're printing big. So if resolution matters to you, get either the M240 or the M10. If you prioritize the usable ISO range of a camera and you always work at ISO 800, then you might be able to get away with the M9. If not, you'd probably want the M240 or the M10. In terms of exposure latitude, how forgiving the camera is. The M9 gives amazing tones at low ISO speeds, but once you reach 800, you have to nail your exposure or you will blow your highlights. So the M10 is the most forgiving in that sense with a ton of exposure latitude, while the M240 sits right in the middle. If you prioritize the physical form of a camera, then in the hands, the M10 feels the nicest, followed very closely by the M9. To me, the M240 is very far behind in this area, being significantly thicker. So if you value how the camera feels in your hands, you'll want to try out the M9 or the M10. In terms of the pictures that each camera gives, I describe the M9 as punchy and nostalgic, while the M240 is bold, vibrant, and energetic. The M10 is much more nuanced and refined, clean and subtle, and everything is held together more, but in that sense, the M10 also has the least amount of overt character. Both the M9 and the M240 have a much more distinct flavor, more expressive tones and colors, where the M10 is more neutral and less opinionated. So out of the three, the M10 is 
closest to other digital cameras out there like a Canon or a Sony, while the M9 and the M240 look very different compared to other brands. So if you want more of an opinion baked in, then you'd want the M9 or the M240, or if you want the most neutral starting point where you can impose your opinion in the grid, then pick the M10. In summary, if you want the closest experience to shooting film, then you'd probably want to go with the M9. If you want the best value per dollar spent, then you'd probably want the M240. If you want the best technical image quality possible, the most dynamic range and the most hi-fi image, then get the M10. Or if money doesn't really matter to you, then go with the M11. That's all for today's video. If you found that helpful, let me know in the comment section below. And a huge shout out and a thank you to my friend Leslie from Prime Camera Singapore for lending me the Leica M10 to shoot the close-up segments of this video. As of today, I've switched fully to film and the only digital Leica I own is the Leica M9. So if you enjoyed that, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.